Hi, I'm Kim, and I'm an East Asian medical provider. One of the things I especially like is Chinese nutritional therapy. So today I'm going to talk about a meat substitute called Satan and how to make it at home. It'll be cheaper and it'll taste better. So here's what I'm going to cover. First, what is Satan? And second, how to choose the best flour to make it. And then third is why flower brands matter. And the fourth is, hey, let's just make it. So if you just want to know how to make it, skip to that chapter. The first thing we're going to talk about is what is Satan? Well, it's a meat substitute and it's made from the proteins of wheat. So what are proteins in wheat? You know, I didn't know this until fairly recently. The proteins in wheat, it's gluten. And okay, so if you're not sensitive to gluten and you're looking for a meat substitute and you're a bit budget conscious, well, then making Satan at home might be a great option. And you know, it's going to taste better. So you want to make Satan. And the first thing you have to look at is the flour that you're going to use because you can't just use any flour to make it. It actually has to be a high protein flour. So it has to be a, a flour that has a lot of gluten in it. And the wheat flours are the ones that have the most gluten in it. So it's going to be a wheat flour and the protein content needs to be 10% or higher. So let's talk about flowers. Here's something that I didn't know that right now today in the United States, we do not have any genetically modified wheat crops grown commercially in the United States. You know, they've been testing a lot and some of the other countries do have some genetic modified crops, but we do not have commercially grown GMO flower crops. So. I want to share a little bit about wheat in the United States. You know what? There's two major categories of wheat. There's going to be soft or hard wheat. And these two categories can either be white or red wheat. And the big growing area for soft white wheat is the Northwest United States and along the Mississippi. And hard red wheat is grown in the two largest wheat producing states, North Dakota and Kansas. So for Satan, you want the higher protein or gluten content. Well, here's the difference. In the soft wheats, they have a higher starch content and they have a lower gluten content. It's the hard wheats that have the higher gluten content and the lower starch content. Gluten is important because it helps hold foods together and it gives it that stretchy, chewy quality. You know, that quality that you get in breads, the higher the gluten content, the more structure it gives to the end product. Soft wheats, on the other hand, they have a low gluten content and a high starch content. So these are great for making cakes and pastries. And the soft white wheat used in these cakes and pastry flours, it's a sweeter wheat. When you're making tortillas, breads, pasta, you need a high gluten content so that they stick together and they don't rip apart and they keep their shape. It's the hard red wheats that are going to be used in the breads and tortillas. And the hard red wheat, it has a heartier taste. When you're in the grocery store, the most common flour you're going to find is going to be cake, pastry, all-purpose, or bread flour. Cake flour, it's going to have the lowest protein content, and that's going to come in around 7 to 10%. The flour that you're looking for is going to be the bread flour. And again, bread flour is made from hard red wheat, and their protein content is going to be between 11 to 14%. The bread flours I use are usually around the 11 to 12 percent, and that means it's over the 10 percent you need to make Satan. So now you know which type of flour to purchase. The next thing to think about is which brand of flour are you buying because you're eating these foods to be healthier. Well, there's a couple of independent flour manufacturers here in the Pacific Northwest that I purchase from, and I do that for a couple reasons. 
first, they are really clear about their manufacturing process and what they put into the wheat and what they don't put into the wheat. And to give you an example, I didn't know you had to age wheat before processing it into flour. Well, that takes time. And so the industry found that they could age wheat quicker using potassium bromate. And potassium bromate, it's cheap and it's easy to access. Well, the U.S. and India are two of the very few countries that have not banned it in the use of foods. It's identified as a genotoxic carcinogen. So, uh, so exhausting sometimes here. But I use King Arthur or Bob's Red Mill, and both of these companies state that they don't use potassium bromate in any of their flowers. So... They're really clear about it and they're really clear about the quality of wheat that they're purchasing and so i just found that to be super positive okay but what really focused me on these small independent brands was when i was buying flour during the pandemic i couldn't always get the bread flour i wanted to use and a couple times i had to buy the big brand names and what shocked me is the flour literally killed my sourdough starter twice. And I was like, how could that be? It's just bread flour. How was it that it couldn't revive my starter? And my starter just wouldn't rise and literally died. You know, the only thing I could think was, what is wrong with that flour? And I'm eating that? Yeah, I don't think so. So it was one of my friends who's a bit of a genius at making sourdough that really highlighted to me that it was a flower that killed your starter. And you really had to be careful about which flower you buy because like all things, not all flour is created equal. So that was probably the biggest thing that got me sticking with these small independent companies. Now you know what type of flour to get bread flour and it has to be the wheat bread flour not a non-wheat one that doesn't really have enough gluten in it and the other thing remember brand matters if you get the right brand it won't kill your starters and that's pretty important okay so let's make some satan there are three major steps to making Satan. And the first one is form your dough and then let it rest in water. And then the second step is wash the dough and then let it rest in water. The third step is cooking your wonderful Satan. So here are the ingredients. There are only two major ingredients for Satan, and that is going to be that awesome bread flour that you bought in water. And the ratio is three to one. So three cups of flour to one cup of water. And if you make bread, it's kind of that same concept. So if you make bread and you make it by hand, it's you're going to mix those ingredients together and you're going to knead it so that it forms a spongy mass. Or you can even mix it in your bread maker. In this recipe, I used three cups of flour to one cup of water. And when it was cooked, it gave me about 13 ounces, which is enough for me. And it's about twice as much as you can buy in a single package. Most of the recipes were asking for nine cups of flour. And that would have been, you know, three pounds of Satan. That's probably too much for me. You've got your ingredients mixed, and so now knead it for about 10 minutes. After you've made your dough, put it in a bowl and cover it with water and let it sit there for one to two hours. So after you've completed this first rest, then pour that water out, and now you have to rinse out all the starch in, in the dough. And... This takes a little bit longer than I thought it would. You know, when I was reading through different recipes, they were like, oh, I let it, I, I had to rinse it out three times. No, I had to rinse it out quite a few times. So it 
it took a it took a lot more water than I thought it was, and it took a lot of more ring scenes than I thought it would. Why you have to rinse out the starch is that's how you get the Satan to bind. If you don't rinse out enough starch, it won't bind. You can see how much of the starch that I washed out. You don't have to go until the water's clear. If you do that, I guess your your Satan's going to be super rubbery. So you can see I had a bit of an opaque color left to it. I washed out a lot of that starch and I really did like the texture afterwards. Now it it's a little dense, but uh, it held together really well and it cooked up great. At this point, you can cut in any spices that you want. And I did the basics, you know, salt, pepper, garlic, paprika. I also added in some Worcestershire sauce and some soy sauce. I did about two teaspoons of soy sauce, one teaspoon of Worcestershire. And then on the spices, I did about a half a teaspoon each. And that gave a really good flavor. I think I could have done a little bit more, but it gave a mild flavor so that if I saved it and then cooked it up again, I could actually add in a different flavor and change the taste of the Satan. Okay, the last step is cooking it. And so before you cook it, you're going to form it uh, however you want to form it. And so I did this knotting routine on mine. You know, I only had the three cups of flour, so I really didn't have enough to knot easily. And why I did the knotting is because that's what gives you that shredded chicken uh, texture. And it wasn't until afterwards that I read somebody else's recipe. And what they did is they, they rolled it out and they cut it into three strips and then they braided it and twisted it. I would do that if you're only doing the three cups because it's too hard to try and get that to knot. Now the last thing is actually cooking it. And I went for a mild method of cooking. So I decided to simmer it in a chicken broth for two hours. And, you know, you could have gone a lot of different ways. You know, you could have cut it up into steaks and fried it and everything. But for me, I didn't want to commit to a flavor. I really wanted to see what this was really going to taste like. So I wanted to make sure that I did something that kept it mild and that if I wasn't sure I liked it, I could switch it up. Well, I liked it. It turned out great. And it was mild enough that if I warmed it up later, it would, I could add in a totally different flavor. After you've simmered it for two hours, here's where you have your two options. One, you can eat it right away. You can fry it up and eat it right away, or you can rest it again. So I went with the resting because I thought, what the heck, let's see what happens when you rest it. So what you do is you're going to keep the broth. You're going to keep your Satan in that broth so it doesn't dry out. You're going to let that cool off to room temperature. And then you're going to put it in the refrigerator for 8 to 10 hours. And then when you take it out, you're going to cut it up and do whatever it is you're going to do with it. You're going to fry it up or however you're going to warm it up and heat it. And then you're going to eat it. And that's what I did. So how did this taste? You know, I like this better. It had this mild flavor. The store-bought Satan, I've never really liked it that much. It's either really dry and it has a slightly sour or bitter taste. And this had a really nice mild flavor that you could easily change up. And, you know, I was thinking, what about the cost on it? Well, you know, if I bought the non-organic flour from my small manufacturers, it was probably a little, it was probably about a dollar in flour that I used to make this. So compared to the $5, if you don't make it now, sure, I, I did put a lot of time into it. And, you know, if you're not just sitting around the house on a Sunday, then this might be a little bit of effort for, for you. And it's more more about time. It wasn't about effort because really I mixed the flour up and then I poured water on it and I let it sit. 
and then I washed it and I let it sit and then I simmered it and I let it sit. So in total, the actual time when I'm doing something was maybe like 35 minutes. Okay, so there's an option for you if you're looking at a meat substitute and if you're looking at making something at home that's going to taste better, so much better than something you're going to buy in the grocery store. Thanks for watching, you guys. I will see you next time on the other side.